Normally on this channel we're looking at cameras and lenses, but in today's video we're looking at lighting. Cameras and lenses are very nice, but it's the lighting that makes the final photos, and I think lighting is probably my secret weapon when it comes to my model photography. If you don't know, I normally use Leica cameras and I teach a lot of model photography, so when it comes to portraits you often need nice lighting. So this little light I'm going to share in this video is my kind of new go-to light where I can carry it everywhere when I'm teaching either here or overseas. It fits in your pocket, you can handhold it, you can put it on a light stand. And the main advantage of this light over many of my other similar lights is now I can control the lighting. And that gives you a huge advantage when it comes to getting the final picture. Hey guys, Matt here from MrLeica.com. So the light we're looking at today is the Zion M20C. It's a small RGB light. They sell it as a fill light and they kindly sent me two units to test so I could show you what I could do with these units. Here's the basic unit kind of out of the frame if you want to call it that. As I say, it's got 20 watt power if you're running it off the battery and it's 18 watts if you're running it off the mains. The fan's a tiny bit noisy if you're doing very quiet video, so maybe not the best if you're using it as a light near your face for video, but it's great if you have it in your background to because it's RGB, you can have it in like multiple colours like many other YouTubers do where they have pinks and blues and various colours uh, blobbing around in the background of their, their videos. It comes with this case, so once you attach the case, you can then connect similar lights via the little uh, hot shoe mounts on the side. You've got the USB-C charging and you've got the threaded socket on the bottom so you can attach it to a light stand. My kind of go-to setup is this on a lightweight light stand and then I use these small rig ball heads so I can then angle the light to the kind of the angle of choice. Now this is where it gets more important. I guess like many lights of this, this nature, it comes with a diffuser. These are nice because it slightly softens the light, but you could probably make your own with a bit of tissue paper like I've done in the past to soften the light. Just to show you the difference, here's the light uh, quality with the diffuser on. You can see it on my arm, it's like no hot spots. And then here's the light with the diffuser off and there's a bit more kind of, I guess, would you call it specular highlights? I think that's the correct term. It's, you basically got more shine on the skin, so it's a bit harsher. Next, the grid. Grids are great and they're less common on panel LED lights like this because normally it's just a lighter, maybe a diffuser. The advantage of a honeycomb grid, if any of you have ever used soft boxes or studio lights, is it means the light only travels in one direction. This really reduces the spill of light. So you see here, the light's now only going forward and it stops the spill all around the room. This is really important if you're working in small spaces because normally you get a lot of bounce light and it breaks your image. What's better than a grid? Barn doors. These are one of my favorite to modifiers when it comes to lights. It doesn't matter if it's flash, studio big lights, or in this case, LED. Once you attach your barn doors, which are magnetic, the same as the diffuser and the grid, you can control the light into like a tight beam if that's the look you're going for and then it stops the spill and because it's a, a panel of lots of little LEDs I just found out by pure luck if I get the barn doors just at the right angle you can get like a blind effect which I found really nice and I use that in some of my photo shoots. Here you can see how the units look with the accessories all attached like stacked together. They stack because they're just all magnetic and then they fit into these little pouches which are supplied. As with most modern LED lights that you find on Amazon, these lights are battery powered, but they take the standard USB-C cable and the advantage of this is you can run them off the mains, which means you can just run them constantly. As mentioned, it does drop the power from 20 watts to 18 watts, but as you see in these examples, it's still enough power. I was shooting at ISO 400 for my film cameras and for digital, 60th of a second F2 at this kind of distance. You can see my fake blind look that I made just from the barn doors, no other accessories needed. Uh, this is just pure accident, me playing around to see what I could get from these lights that I discovered this blind look or fake blind look. Here can you see me using it as a hair light and I'm using the window light as kind of the key light. And I've also got a third light, like a practical light in the background. Here, this is one of my most common setups. I use one light to boost the window light or to boost available light. Then I'll have a second light on the opposite side, often with a grid or barn doors as a hair light, just to give like a, a cutout. This is another workshop you can see me teaching. So this is the final result of the photo setup you just saw. Boosting daylight from the window side, cutout light from the opposite side. It gives a really nice separation from the background. 
Here again, you've got one LED boomed up. Sorry for the changing exposure here. And then you've got another LED running off the mains to the left, camera left, running off a, an extension cable. And here's the final results. I was using a vintage lens to get some flare on the lens, just playing around. It's a 1930s lens if you're interested. Video still to come, hit subscribe. <laughs> And so there you can see the effect. It separates the model from the background and gives a bit of flair if that's the look you're going for. Same model, uh, same day, I'm trying to keep track. This is another workshop at the student's house. And then this one, this is not teaching. This was on a road trip when I was in Europe a couple of weeks ago. This is in uh, Austria. So again, boosting daylight. So I'm often using the light on the same axis as my key light or my key available light. And that just gives a bit more pop to the images, as you can see in these ones. Another thing you can do is obviously use these outside. So this is darker than it looks. It's kind of the end of the day. So I'm using a light off the under rail, the railing, and I'm also using the light close to a face. Here you can see the results. These are shot with a Lycra cell with a close focus light lens lab adapter. And I think it's a Canon 51.4 lens if you're interested. You can then also handhold it because it's just pocket size. As I say, this is without all the mods taken off, so it's the smallest, so it just fits into my pocket and it's really lightweight. Here you can see an example picture. I couldn't get that far away because I was hand holding it. Now, if you don't use all the accessories, you can actually just fit it onto a phone mount, I found. Again, this is just me um, experimenting. So if I take a phone mount to, say, record any behind the scenes videos, I can clip the light onto the same mount so I don't need to carry extra kit. Here's me using it now at night. I was shooting into some like uh, DJ lights in the background. And then I had that as a fill light uh, camera side as you just saw from the setup. Same again or similar, hand holding the light. And again, hand holding the light or someone else held it for me. It's RGB so you can match the light to the background. So what's the verdict? First of all, thanks for sending me the light. They do do a lot of different lights. You've got your high power Molus lights, the most famous being the X100. You've got the brand new Cine is it Cine Keeper? Cine Peer, uh, 15 watt light, which is their brand new one. That's cheaper than the 20 watt. And then you've got the 20 watt range, which are the ones I've been using. You can see RGB here, I've got it dialed in for uh, warm light on the internal side, and they've got it dialed for daylight on the window side, so it looks like daylight. There you can see it fitting into a phone holder, so you don't need to carry additional kind of devices to hold things with if you want just a minimal kit without the, the casing. And to finish, a bonus tip. Regardless of what LED light you've got or even flash, if you want to modify the light to stop the light spilling everywhere, you can get this black foil made by Roscoe. Uh, the student had it yesterday and she brought it out and so we used it to flag the light the same as you would do with barn doors or a grid. I can put a link below to Amazon if you're interested in any of these lights. As always, a huge thanks to my amazing patrons and I'll see you in the next video.